morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Great to have you here. So uh, tell us more about EduFarmers. It was founded in 2015, and what have you done over the past seven years? Sure. So um, first of all, uh, thank you very much for having me. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amri, um, the CEO of EduFarmer Foundation. So Farmer International, it's a foundation. So it's a non-organization mm -hmm. uh, that focuses on enhancing the agricultural sectors. Um, True, it was founded in 2015, so we've been around for seven years. Um, and what we have been doing so far is uh, having a uh, what we call a bertani untuk negeri program. So this is uh, a program to improve the agricultural uh, productivity and income for farmers, while also involving the youth uh, in the process. Okay. Oh, certainly very interesting. So, um, you. Uh, you know, you are involving the youth, and I heard of this program that you have, right? Uh, the mm. youth development program called Bertani Untuk Negri, so or Farming for the Nation in English. Could you please explain more about this? How many participants are involved, and who are the participants? I heard there are that you actually also involve a lot of young people um, to educate. And how is this done? Can you tell us about the program? Sure, sure, yeah. But uh, maybe before I jump into the program, I want to uh, have a little bit about the background here, right? Like, mm. uh, we have few challenges, as you already mentioned, in terms of the agricultural sector and also food security. The first one is, the, of course, the agricultural productivity in Indonesia is lower than potential, uh, and therefore reducing our global competitiveness and the food uh, self-sufficiency. Indonesia is only ranked 65th out of 113 countries in the Global Food Security Index. The second one is that Indonesia needs graduates who are more uh, workplace ready, will become the next generation of future leader in entrepreneurship. And the third challenge is about the farmer regeneration. Mm. So, uh, although agriculture has been an important sector that provides food security in Indonesia, because, you know, like we're agrarian countries, uh, as we mentioned, however, there are no far less people working in the agriculture. It's only 28% of Indonesian labor force in 2021 versus 35% in 2011. So the drop in the workforce is around 3.7 million people. Um, and, you know, like, farmers are also getting older, right? Like yeah, the, yeah. Uh, uh, more than 45% of farmers is above 45 years old. And therefore, we uh, founded a program called the Green Country. Um, so the program itself is that we uh, so, so the idea is like Indonesia mengajar, right? Like yeah. for Indonesia, this is for farmers. So we put together farmers um, who have the practical farming skills because they have experience in doing the, the farming um, uh, continuously. Mm -hmm. And in the youth uh, who has, uh, you know, like the theory from the class, from the university and also the industry experts who know best practice on how uh, to do farming. And put together, we want to solve the agricultural challenge face uh, by the farmers by involving the youth and also the, the industry expert. Um, and the way the program works is that um, we, we first hire uh, the university students through Campus Merdeka program. So mm -hmm. technically they are uh, interning in, in, our, uh, in our organization yep. and then we deploy them on the field and work directly alongside the farmers. And the program itself is consists of four uh, main activities. The first one, uh, before uh, we deploy the students or the university students to uh, train farmers directly. We first give them a boot camp. Mm. So this boot camp uh, lasts for around four weeks mm -hmm. to train the student to provide them with knowledge and skills needed so that the participant can work effectively in the field. Uh, and we provide them with hard skills and soft skills uh, during the boot camp. And it's usually done uh, through the online uh, platform. Mm -hmm. And the second one is the farm experience. It's around two weeks uh, period where the student will stay at the company farm. So we have a company farm. We have mm -hmm. a uh, collaboration with, with other companies and, you know, like a pri uh, private industry mm -hmm. uh, to host them and learn directly in the company farm. Wow. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the objective is to, to apply the theory that have been uh, obtained uh, in the university by the student to the duration of the farm and also like uh, the, the industry expert can also, um, you know, share 
uh, a best practice experience to the students. And then the third uh, phase, it's the productivity project where we deploy them on the farm. So they work directly with the poultry farmers, for example, a, with, with the corn farmers, with the horticulture farmers. Uh, and what they do in the field is that first they're doing the productivity project. So they're collecting the data, they're diagnos diagnosing the, the farm, uh, designing the recommendation, as well as uh, implementing and controlling the initiative to increase the, the farmer's product. Uh, and because the each farmer problem is different, right? Mm -hmm. And so the solution uh, uh, that will be, uh, you know, uh, mentioned by the students will also be different. Um, and then uh, this activity will also involve a farmer field school. Uh, you know, like the Indonesian is like sekolah lapang. It's mm -hmm. for transferring the knowledge and learning from the students and also the expert together on the field. So we invited the farmers as well to have a workshop uh, every two weeks to learn about the, the the experience that they have been doing in the past two weeks and also like the possible implementation of the solution that the students and the farmer can work together in the next two weeks. Uh, so that lasts for about four and a half months. Uh, and then lastly, at the end of the program, uh, there will be a, a closing uh, that each of the students have to present uh, their experience, their, their project report, and we will give them final assessment uh, because this program is part of Campus Merdeka. Mm -hmm. and so uh, there will be a, a conversion of the university credit. It's around 20 credit points. Wow. Uh, and based on final assessment, it will be converted into an actual uh, a credit in, in the universities. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the four uh, uh, phase of the programs. Um, and then uh, all of this program is, is lasting for around five to six months. Um, and, and the outcome that we expect is that hopefully by the end of the program, uh, farmers' knowledge will improve. Uh, farmers' uh, agricultural practice will also improve. They will adopt the best practice. And of course, for the student itself, uh, they can learn from the farmers uh, 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 themselves. Right. directly working on the farms uh, uh, every single day um, and, and so far in terms of the number uh, we have run the program for five batches so far mm. uh, that involve more than 500 university students so it's it's coming from uh, all across indonesia from Aceh, from sumatra from jawa uh, east nusa tenggara kalimantan sulawesi ambon all the way to papua Wow. So uh, already more than 500 students in, in five batches of the program. And so far, we've also uh, uh, trained more than 1,300 farmers across eight provinces in Indonesia. Okay, definitely covers a lot of ground there, and there's nothing like good old hands-on learning by experience. Yeah. So, uh, Masavri, you mentioned, uh, you touched on collaborations a little bit of earlier on. Uh, can you tell us about some of these collaborations that you have with either international organizations or perhaps even the local governments? Yeah. Sure, yeah. I think uh, collaboration is the key here, right? Because we cannot work alone. We have to work together with all various stakeholders, uh, such as the government, the university, and, and etc. So, what we've been doing is, uh, of course, we first uh, collaborating with, with the government uh, uh, because, you know, like they the the one who, who, who have the policy, uh, they have the resources. So we mainly work with the with the Minister of Education uh, and Culture okay. uh, for the Campus Merdeka program mm -hmm. uh, for Britannia untuk Negeri program, and then uh, we're also currently uh, working uh, side by side with the Minister of Agriculture to uh, design and, and pilot a similar program, but under the Minister of Agriculture. Mm. Um, and so hopefully in the near future, we, we, we will have a, a similar program, but with different ministries. Uh, in terms of the local government, we work with uh, the government of Java, for example, we work with the uh, Dinas uh, Kehutanan, mm. um, uh, because uh, in West Java, we have this Bertani untuk Negeri program that focus on horticulture. And we want to plant it uh, in the area that will be reforested. So, uh, in in addition to uh, uh, you know like doing uh, the agriculture, uh, we want the, the farmers to also plant some trees, you know, like that that can reforest uh, the areas. Um, and also in Central Sulawesi, where we have the the corn commodity, working with the with the local government in Central Sulawesi. Um, from universities, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, it's uh, across all Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, we work together to you know like uh, select the, the, the students um, and work together with them to convert uh, the credit from our program into their actual uh, credit score in universities uh, from the industry together with with the private sector such as uh, Java, uh, Corteva, and we also working with startup uh, like Pitik mm -hmm. uh, because it's also like a um, you know like millennial the youth is 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 uh, love working with technology and mm -hmm. Pitik is one of the startup that use technology to 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 increase the productivity and make the, the process more efficient. Um, and, and young people love startups, right? And the last one, also like NGO and international organizations such as Prisma, Rabobank Foundation, and Grow Asia. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, uh, all of uh, those partners, and hopefully we can uh, even grow our partnership uh, in the near future as well. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, you certainly cover a lot of ground, but <laughs> one thing um, as a training and education person, I mean, Campus Merdeka means you have access to um, university students from all around Indonesia, right? So, uh, but speaking of, how many areas uh, do you focus on? What is the biggest challenge that you have to focus face so far in, uh, in your aim to create future leaders in the agriculture sector? Because we're talking about learning materials here, right? And you were talking about regenerating. Yeah. So is the hope, right. uh, so is the hope for you, this, these Campus Merdeka graduates will take an interest to agriculture? Or is the hope for you is the access to the farmers who, that will be educated, who perhaps can educate the next generation as well. And what do they get education on and other than best practices? Because you've also mentioned, you know, some soft skills or, or you know, like, yeah. what are these included? Financial literacy, digital li literacy, is that also included? Sure, yeah. Um, so, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, the objective is, is for both actually, like mm. for uh, the young people to actually uh, make them interested to work as a farmer. Because as I mentioned earlier, there is a an issue about the regeneration of farmers, because farmers are getting older and uh, we have few uh, farmers now. And the second one is also true that um, uh, we work with the students to, to improve the, the productivity of uh, the farmer that they train and also mm -hmm. hopefully the farmers can also train uh, their community uh, their their kelompok tani for example mm. and in terms of the focus area uh, we actually teach both the hard skill uh, as you mentioned you know like the good agricultural practices farm management introduction to businesses Ooh. basic accounting and finance but also research because we want them to collect the data uh, really analyzing what are problems uh, happening with these particular farmers in this particular farm and then provide a solutions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, they must also have a soft skills um, in order for them to work directly with the farmers because it's uh, sometimes it's not easy, right? Like mm -hmm. working with someone who is older than you, uh, especially if this university student is still very young, mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, you know, like older people uh, uh, not really uh, paying too much attention to, to, to the students, for example, and therefore we 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 also teach them during the boot camp about the leadership, uh, about how to collaborate with farmers, how uh, to do a facilitation process with with the farmers, mm -hmm. uh, to do a good communication, critical thinking, and also uh, problem solving skills. Um, so those are uh, some focus areas that we want to, uh, for the young generation uh, that we hope to be a future leader in agriculture. Um, and, and currently we're, we're focusing on, on um, four commodities. So mm -hmm. regular chicken, layer chicken, horticulture, culture is like chili, tomatoes, mm -hmm. all the vegetables, and also lastly uh, for corn. Uh, so those uh, four uh, focus uh, area in terms of the commodity wise. Um, and also lastly, I think you also uh, mentioned about the challenges like working directly with the youth and also with the farmers. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I observe during the program is that uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, quite challenging to build discipline uh, among the youth uh, mm -hmm. because when, when they have to live together with the farmers, uh, well, they have to wake very early in the morning sometimes yeah. and have to travel <laughs> quite long distance yeah. to go to the farm, True. for example. And then it's, it's not like office workers, right? Well, mm -hmm. when uh, you are working from 9 to 5, for example, that, like these uh, university students have to work 
like 24 hours uh, even like uh, when something happened with the with the broiler chicken for example they have to be very uh, responsive uh, to prevent you know like disaster for example like um, if the fan is turned off because of the electricity issue they have to solve it like very quickly mm -hmm. so we want to really build the discipline among the youth because mm -hmm. you know sometimes yeah farming uh, uh, is, is not easy right yes. like, you, you have yes. to walk uh, on the field, it's like physical work, and uh, they need to, to have a discipline to do that. Uh, and the second one, I think, uh, in, in general, uh, is that there is a low interest in agricultural sector uh, from the young generation because uh, I think first uh, they 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 think that this is a low income. So uh, the key is uh, on how to to improve the productivity, and therefore you will get more income yeah. uh, because. You know, like sometimes price, it's it's the factor that we cannot we cannot control, right? Like sometimes the price of the commodity can be very high or very low, but then what you can control is actually to increase the productivity. Uh, so uh, no matter what price level that your commodity is selling, uh, you always ready that you know, like uh, I will have this 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 uh, amount of revenue that that I will get from the farming. Uh, and the second one, I think uh, the sector is not seen as cool or sexy because it's, it's a dirty work again you, you have to work in the field working with soil for example with with animal uh, but i think here uh, uh, still related to, to to income low income and also like the the uh, the, the fullness of the, the sector we need to show the success story to boost the spirit and the willingness uh, for young people to work in agriculture uh, for example currently the government uh, especially the minister of agriculture has a millennium farmer program. So they, they give training and empowerment for young farmers. And in one of the workshops that I recently attended, uh, the minister is the three farmers, you know, like three millennial farmers. They're still very young. Uh, one of them is like planting chili in Bogor. Uh, they have 30 ton per hectare, this wow. uh, female farmer. Uh, and they even have a revenue of 1.5 billion rupiah per hectare. Um, uh, and they have 28 hectares in total. So can you imagine like every, uh, every you know, like uh, season, they will have around more than 40 billion in total revenue. So, so that's like really, really a big potential actually. Yes. Like these young people need to explore more about the potential in the agricultural industry. Um, and, and fortunately, uh, the, the agri-tech is growing, right? Yeah. Um, uh, we have a, a wave of startup, but then uh, now the wave is coming to the agricultural sector, and some of the startup have uh, proven that uh, they can also uh, get profit uh, because they don't have to burn as much money uh, because uh, what they're working is with the, with the farmer. They don't uh, really have to burn any money for the consumer side. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another appeal uh, for the young people. Uh, and lastly, I think they, they will need more access to training to, to accompany them, to give them like uh, step by step on, on how to be a, a farmer and also like the, the future leader in, in, in farming. Yeah. So if you guys want to find out more, uh, make sure you check out www.edufarmers.org or you can simply check them out on Instagram at edufarmers. Thank yes. you so much, Masamri, for your time. Thank you so much, Masamri. Very informative. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. You know, uh, one thing that I want to point out is that appreciation that it tries to educate discipline to the younger generation. Right, waking up at uh, yes. 5 a.m., not so easy, is it? <laughs> but other than that, also, I think consistency and um, it gives them a chance to explore and really a new sense of appreciation, sure. right? That there are so many hardworking people in this world. And if you can increase productivity, hey, you can earn up to those millennial farmers $40 billion a, a season. That's a lot of money out there That's to be made. That's a lot of money and a lot of potential to tap that is yes. yet to be tapped. So mm -hmm. there's an opportunity there. But all right, guys, we're up for another short break. In the meantime, don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. Stay connected with us if you haven't already. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at CSTAY News. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.